Hello! It is a good day because we are going to talk about the five best books that I read in 2021. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Amber Elise and I talk about books. If you also like talking about books and you have come to the right place. In my last video I talked about the five worst books that I read in 2021 so we're bringing some positivity to this video and talking about the five best and let me tell you this was not a hard decision. I am very pleased with each book that I picked. This list is not in any particular order. I'm pretty sure I love them each the same and I actually have reviews for four out of five of these books on my channel. You are more than welcome to check those out. Okay let's get started. The first book we're going to discuss discuss is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. So this is a book before The Hate You Give but it was written after The Hate You Give and it's all about Maverick Carter that stars dad, stars the main character in The Hate You Give and we learn about his story and all his struggles and what it was like for him to grow up. By the way it was hard for me to admit this but now I have no problem saying it. I love this so much better than The Hate You Give. I feel like Angie did a much better job on this book. I feel like she was a much stronger writer in this book and told a better story and the length was a lot better. Don't get me wrong The Hate you give was very good it's very iconic but Concrete Rose takes the cake for me. This book has such a special place in my heart for so many reasons. Obviously the story was amazing but this was my first Angie Thomas book. It was very emotional. I cried. I laughed. I just had a really great time with this book and I highly recommend it. Concrete Rose is a must in my book collection. Very happy that I read it this year. The next book on my list is The Cousins by Karen M. McManus and I'm actually very excited to talk about this book because I've talked about two of Karen's books in my past two videos and I feel like he will probably think I have a negative perspective on her books and I want to make it very clear that I do not dislike all of her books. I adored this book. The funny thing is most people seem to like this book the least out of all of her books and it is my favorite. I know a lot of people will probably disagree with me but I thought she did such a good job with this book. It's not your typical thriller. It's definitely more of a mystery than a thriller but it does fit in the thriller category. This follows three cousins and the parents were disinherited before the cousins were born and they don't know why. But one day the siblings get a letter from their grandmother. They've never met their grandmother and their grandmother invites them to come work at her island resort. Their parents are like, you are absolutely going because we are going to get our inheritance back. The kids end up going, but when they get there, things are not what they seem. They learn a lot of information. It gets crazy and they and the readers are in for a wild ride. This this story did not go in the direction I was expecting at all. At first I didn't know how I was going to feel about it but it pretty much enticed me from the very beginning. It does move, I don't want to say slower, but kind of slower than Karen's other books. But there's a lot of meat in there. There's a lot of substance. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of plot twists and the ending, you guys. This ending is one of the best endings for a mystery and thriller that I have ever read. Everything fit together so well. To me it was a very intelligent and well thought out conclusion. I truly, truly, truly enjoyed this. And the way the book ended, I feel like there's going to be a part two and I really hope that I'm accurate about that because I would pick it up and read it in a heartbeat. This book was everything and more and it was 100% going on this list. Next we have The Queen of Books, Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. I have recommended this book to pretty much everybody who will ask me for a book recommendation. This one took me a minute to recover from. It was a lot. It was very heavy, but it was a great book. It deals with some very serious heavy topics. It's a lot to take in but this was definitely a book worth reading and it's basically about this girl named Claudia who's best friends with Monday. They do everything together and when Claudia goes out of town for the summer and doesn't hear from Monday at all she kind of panics when she gets back she figures they'll talk and reconnect and everything will be fine but she still doesn't hear from Monday when she gets back. She doesn't see her at school. Weeks pass by. No sign of Monday and the worst part is nobody really seems concerned that she's missing. So we basically deal with with Claudia trying to find Monday and trying to get people to take her seriously. And there's so much that goes into this. My heart was racing so many times during this book because you sometimes have an idea of what's going on, but then you don't. And even when I thought I knew what was going on, I didn't know the extent of what was going on. And when I did find out what was going on, it hit me very hard. I cried so hard during this book and it was very chilling. This doesn't have that typical thriller storyline, but it was more chilling than most thrillers that I've read. 
I definitely recommend this book. I just suggest that you get prepared emotionally for it. Now I can't wait to read the rest of Tiffany D. Jackson's books. I actually have grown on my bookshelf over there. So I plan on reading that soon. Monday's Not Coming is probably my most recommended book of 2021. And also one of the best books that I read in 2021. This next book makes me so angry because I feel like it is not getting the attention that it deserves. And that is Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. I actually have to put myself in that category of people who don't appreciate it because I did not read this when it first came out. And a lot of new releases, I jump on them right away. I think there were certain parts of the premise that didn't grab me and I'm sure other people are the same way, which I think comes from the dancing aspect of this book. I think that that probably turns people off from it. Even me, I actually have done ballet, jazz, contemporary. I love dancing, but depending on the style of dance, sometimes I don't wanna read about dancing books because it's a lot different when people are describing it. I can't explain it, but it's about a girl who basically has lost hope in love. Her parents are divorced or getting a divorce and there's things that led to that divorce that really have messed with her and made her have very negative feelings about love. One day she ends up getting this strange ability to see when relationships will begin and end, which doesn't really assist with her issues with love. But she ends up finding herself at this dance studio where she meets this guy and they end up training to compete in this dance off. As she dances with him, she starts developing feelings and she starts questioning her views on love and how she's been perceiving it. I feel like the summary of this book does not give it justice. This is an excellent book on love and loss, especially for younger adults and even teenagers of certain age brackets. And I said this in my review, but I found it to be life-changing and so incredibly touching. And I think this is something that a lot of people should read. And even if you're not a young adult or a teenager, I think that you could benefit from this book. This book took me by surprise and I'm glad I went ahead and gave it a chance because it is now one of my favorite books. I feel like this is definitely something you should add to your TBR if you have not yet. Okay, this last book. I know I said that I loved all of these equally, but if I had to pick a favorite, it would be this book. And that is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This book will forever have a special place in my heart for so many reasons. I adored everything about this and it was honestly my first leap into the fantasy world. And I'm so grateful for it because I have since read other fantasy books or have started other fantasy books. And I like the genre, but having a black lead as my first fantasy book made this even better. Our main character is Decca, Queen Decca, where Miss Decca lives. She is now of age where she has to do a blood ceremony. And at that blood ceremony, it's basically life or death because if her blood is gold, she is considered impure. And if her blood is red, she's considered pure. Impurity is bad. You're basically subject to being killed or tortured. Decca's blood is gold. Everybody pretty much turns on her. She's put in some horrible situations, but then she's given this opportunity to either stay and deal with that, or she can go fight for the emperor with other young women who have gold blood as well. She doesn't want to be tortured forever, so she decides to go fight for the Emperor. She knows other dangers exist if she does that, but she still goes through with it. But when she goes to train and meet with all the other girls like her, they learn a lot about who they are, the situation they're in, and what's to come next. I was so empowered after reading this book. There is going to be a sequel. I have already pre-ordered it. This was both inspirational, fun, sad, emotional. It was creepy at times. It was very hard to read sometimes. There are definitely some serious elements elements in this book, so keep that in mind. But the story is so creative and well thought out. The ending was a bit rushed to me, but I love this book. I am for sure rereading this book. I have not reread a book in so long, but this one I'm definitely rereading. I wanna read it right before the second one comes out so I can get associated with the characters again and have a strong idea where we left off. But absolutely, positively amazing. All right, you all, that concludes the five best books I read in 2021. This will be my last video of 2021, and I just wanna say that it's been an amazing year. I am so thankful for everybody who has subscribed and have taken the time to watch my content. I love doing this. I would do it if I didn't have a single person watching me. So to see all the different people take the time to show an interest in my channel, I am very appreciative and it does not go unnoticed. This video has come to an end, but I will see you all again in my next video. Until we meet again, go read.